Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry I'm wearing this, but it's so cold today, I have no idea. Um, so it's been a month. <laughs> I did it again, yes. Um, I didn't... I, I didn't make any videos <laughs> for another month because um, I'm so stressed. I have so much to do for university, you have no idea. I, I haven't been sleeping properly. I'm so freaking stressed um, and upset and uh, my neck hurts every day, <laughs> all the time. And yeah, so I just didn't have time to do any, to make any videos and um, I still don't. But today I said, no, I can take like half an hour or an hour to do this uh, because I also need a break. Uh, so I organized my room, not my room, it looks the same, but my desk, I had a stuff, a, st a bunch of stuff that I didn't need, uh, so I just got rid of it all, and I ended up organizing my bookshelf, so that's why this is a bookshelf tour. Um, yeah, so I'm tired. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are having like a nice semester if you are studying, if you're working, I hope everything is going okay. Uh, we just have like a lot of work to do. This master's degree is very, very different from my other master's degree because it's in a different field of study. So it's not literature. I study literature for six years. No, this is education. So this is social science and ethics and psychology and everything and methods and approaches and well. <laughs> And um, it's difficult because I, I'm loving it, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm a bit disappointed with some some things, but it's like politics. Um, but I'm loving it and I don't regret my decision of joining this master's degree. Not at all. Like, I really wanted to do this and I'm so happy that I'm doing it. But still, of course, it's just a lot of work. Not complaining, just stating the obvious. Um, but it is true that some things still disappoint me uh, in the Portuguese education system, whatever. For example, I've met some people from different countries who, who are here doing their MAs and one thing that everyone tells me is they're, that, that they're surprised um, because we spend a crazy amount of hours in the classroom. And that's true. I have five classes. Three of those classes are four hours each. For example, on Tuesday, I only have two classes. I start at half past eight and I leave at half past five because I have four hours for each class. And our system is very teacher-centered. Our, our method, our Portuguese method is very teacher-centered. So even in university, so imagine four hours starting at half past eight, just listening. We have like a 15 minute break in between, but that's nothing. Um, so yeah, there's not a lot of practice, there's a lot of listening and a lot of information to take in. And then for some reason, professors forget that you have other classes. So they just don't care if you have more work to do. So everything together in the same week, why not? <laughs> um, so Next week I have two tests and I have a deadline for a research paper and then I have winter break, I think that's what you call it. Uh, and then starting on the first week of January I have a presentation and then on the second week of January I have two exams, the 9th and the 10th, two exams. And also I have to submit an essay on the 9th and I have an exam, and then on the 10th I have an exam, and then in the afternoon I have a presentation. Because for some reason there are not more there, there aren't more days in, in January. You just have to do everything at once. Um, so yeah, that's kind of killing me, like the stress. Not really the fact that I have, because I've done it before, but just the stress is killing me. And yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> Um, okay, so I decided to do a bookshelf tour, so that's what you're going to see right now. Okay, so this is what my bookshelf looks like now. My encyclopedias were here, and they took up a lot of space. So I had books on top of books on top of books, and now it looks better. 
On the back, I still have books. I have dictionaries and grammars and books that I don't read anymore, but I still want to keep. And over here, I still have a lot of space um, on the back to put new books. So that's good. I'm sitting on the floor, so let me just slide <laughs> here. Okay, so let's start with this one. Uh, so here I have my chunky books, minus that one, obviously. Um, so this one is new illustrated edition, the complete works of William Shakespeare, plays and sonnets people, all illustrated. Uh, this book was a gift and it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Uh, I might do just, you know, I'm, I might make a video on it. To show you some of the illustrations because they're gorgeous and I love Shakespeare I don't know if you knew that about me but I love Shakespeare Billy Shakes my bro uh, I felt weird saying that <laughs> uh, over here I have my Harry Potter and the cursed child book from the world lounge I was there uh, so this is a hardcover uh, we'll go back we'll get back to Harry Potter soon um, like on the next shelf, I think. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, here I have the Selected Works by Virginia Woolf. I really love this edition. There she is. Because it has fiction and non-fiction. And when I started reading Virginia Woolf, I started with her non-fiction for university. So I really think it's important for this, these type of editions to have both fiction and non-fiction if possible. Over here I have Moby Dick and The Count of Monte Cristo Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, these are in Portuguese. They were a gift from my mom. Um, these, this, is, this was like a, something from a newspaper. Yeah, from the newspaper Publico. Uh, many, many years ago. You had to buy the newspaper, pay extra to get the book. And I wanted these free, so I don't have all of them. I only have these free because these were the ones I wanted at the time. And, um, yeah, they're wonderful. And, uh, you know, even though they're in Portuguese, I, I, I say that, <laughs> I don't want to sound mean, like, oh, they're in Portuguese. No. Um, but I would like to read Moby Dick in English, for example. I would really love to do it. Over here, we have Esses Queiroz, Os Maias. This is my favorite Portuguese author. I, this this was my first book by Asit Queiroz, actually, and I had to read that for high school, and I love it. I completely love it. You should read Asit Queiroz, give it a try, because you might, uh, you might adore him like I do. And that book is Thomas Hardy, The Fiddler of the Reels and Other Stories. I haven't read that one yet. Over here... Yeah, so there's Harry Potter. So... Focus. Okay, so here we have volume one and volume two of Haruki Murakami's 1Q84. I desperately need volume three because the second book, I mean, uh, at the end, I felt so powerless reading the end. Uh, the end was just, God, I need the third book. What the hell happened? <laughs> um, I love Haruki Murakami. Um, I'm going to buy the third book like from the same edition obviously to look perfect and complete but uh the other book that i have by Rukimurakami, murakami the wind up bird chronicle is a pocket book and i'm gonna buy all of my murakami books like that because these editions are like 23 euros each and the pocket book is like nine euros so um yeah big difference over here we have Prozac Nation and Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, which feature in my top 10 favorite books. This one is a children's book. It's here because it has a message on the inside written by my grandfather, who was a big, uh, how should I say this, like a big inspiration, but also he supported my reading and writing a lot. And he wrote a lot too. Um, so this is here as a reminder. This one is Life Inside by Minnie Lewis. This is the same 
more or less the same type of memoir as Prozac Nation, Girl Interrupted. And people often forget about Mimi Lewis. And some people don't even know this book ex exists. And you should read this book. If you like Prozac Nation or Girl Interrupted, you're going to love this. So read it. Live inside. It's awesome. I am an emotional creature. I think this is the same author who wrote The Vagina Monologues, which I didn't like and didn't finish. But I got that book when I was younger. And I actually... Like, some of the poems are really cute, and um, I haven't read them in a while, but, you know, it's a really fun book. Over here we have the Harry Potter collection, so I, one, one thing that I like to, like, just for disclosure, I like Harry Potter, but I'm not obsessed with it anymore, and I haven't read the books in ages, because I have other things to read. And they're here because they're a big part of my childhood. And that's why I wanted Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Because, you know, it was a big part of my life. And that's why they're here. Um, but I'm not like one of those people who just say, Oh, it's summer break, so I'm going to reread Harry Potter. Like, no, I have other stuff that I want to read. Um, also, uh, I've watched a lot of people on YouTube saying that they don't get people who like Harry Potter but have never read Lord of the Rings. I think that's a cultural thing. Uh, when I was a child, everyone knew Harry Potter, no one knew Lord of the Rings, okay? We only, like, we only started paying attention to Lord of the Rings because of the films. Um, I know some people that read Lord of the Rings when they were kids, but, I mean, I know, like, one person. Everyone else that I know knew Harry Potter. So it was it was different, I think. It's very, very different here in Portugal. Over here we have José Saramago. This is one of my least favorite Portuguese authors. It's here because my this is my sister's book, but she got like a new edition. So she, she <laughs> just sent me that. I <laughs> uh, haven't read this one and... I don't like. I don't feel like reading it now. I just I don't like Saramago at all. Um, so you know, I don't know what to say. Over here, Animal Farm. So here I have some books that some of my favorite books, some books that I haven't read in a long time. One book at least that I don't like at all. So the Tracy Fragments. I reviewed this book in my channel already. Doors of Perception. And I have this book because I read that Jim Morrison named his band The Doors because of this book. So uh, The Doors are my favorite band and that's why I needed to read it. Then I have my music books, so to speak. So I have Ian Curtis uh, poems. Uh, Ian Curtis from Joy Division, obviously. Kurt Cobain's book. Uh, the title is I Hate Myself and I Want to Die. Mine is in Portuguese. And I'm so over Kurt Cobain. I think it's just here because it's part of, you know, the series or whatever. But I might just sell it or, I don't know. Uh, I'm so over Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. I, just, I don't know why it's here. Jim Morrison. I have two books of poems by Jim Morrison. And you should really give these a try. I love him. The Underground Railroad, The Bell Jar, obviously, Christian F. I cried so much when I read this book. You have no idea. We need to talk about Kevin. Love it. Uh, Blindness by José Saramago. Again, my sister bought that book for me and she said, you might enjoy Saramago if you read it in English. That's not really true because it's a Portuguese author and I can only read Portuguese authors in Portuguese. So... Sorry, I haven't read that one yet. I might read it because maybe in English, I don't know, maybe it will be different, but ugh, I don't like Sanamag. Over here, The Impartition of Murder. I think I mentioned this book in, on my Instagram and I'm not a big fan of mystery novels. Like, not at all. But read this, please. I cannot, I don't know, I cannot express how good this book is. You should really give it a try. Um, Madame Bovary and Fathers and Children, This, these are very cheap editions that I got, and I've read Madame Bovary, haven't read this one yet. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, A Study in Scarlet, Girl Interrupted, and then two Portuguese books, so Miguel Torga and Lua Joana, which was so important for me growing up and still is, still love it. Over here, whew. so... This is a book about England 
and it's in Spanish. This is non-fiction because I bought it in Barcelona. That's why it's in Spanish. And yeah, just wanted to read more about England. <laughs> this one is And Yes, Saw the Angel by Nick Cave. I'm a big fan. Uh, Master and Margarita. This, this is my dad's. I need to give it this back. Uh, the Robber Bridegroom by Adora Wealthy. I had to read that for university. I'm not a big Adora Wealthy's fan. This one is here just for now because I didn't have a book to put here that, that would fit. I hate this book. This was a big mistake. I kind of feel like asking for my money back. Uh, no disrespect, really, but there's no character development at all. I don't know why people were so excited about this. I, I haven't read the rest of the series and I'm not going to because I'm not going to spend my money on this. The, the, this is annoying. This is so... Forget it. The The main character is childish, is, is annoying, is a, a toddler. Okay? She's a toddler. She's just... I don't know. Well, I don't know what she's doing with her life. So, temporary. Sebastian Fox, A Week in December. I love this book. Um, I wasn't really... Like, I wasn't really excited when I had to read it. This was for an English final tutorial. We had to read this at university, and then our final tutorial would be about the book that we picked. And from all of, you know, from the list, which was really short, this one was the one that I thought, eh, might be good, but at the same time, wasn't really excited. Ended up loving it, and I want to read more. My Seb Sebastian, Sebastian folks, yeah. The Exorcist. I was really scared of the movie when I, when, when I was growing up, um, but I read this in a day and meh. The Hobbit, see, I read something. <laughs> I haven't read Lord of the Rings yet because, you know, it's not my priority, but The Hobbit's pretty good. I liked it. Uh, the Tales of Mystery and the Macabre, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. This is the first book of the Millennium series. I got this one for a pound in England. This is a Tim Burton's book, Haruki Murakami, The Wind Up Burn Chronicle. See, this is what I mean when I say that I want to buy the like pocket books for um to uh, sorry <laughs> by Haruki Murakami because they're they're only they're not just small but they're cheaper. <laughs> Ordinary Thunderstorms by William Boyd. Haven't finished this one because it got really, really boring and I was just, I, I, I was falling asleep reading it. And then Women Who Run With Wolves. I bought this, but I haven't even, I haven't even started it. It's nonfiction, I think. Not really excited about it after all. <laughs> okay. Top shelf, everyone. So I have some collections here. Ongoing, obviously. I will never finish one, I think. And um, we start here. Some of these books I already mentioned on my book haul video in last summer. All of these are books that I found in second bookstores, second hand bookstores, uh, minus these two. So this is a Fnan Pessoa book. These are poems by Fnan Pessoa. And these are short stories by Esil Queiroz. Uh, this belongs, belongs to my father. And this one was, uh, my uncle gave it to me. He didn't want it anymore. And all of the others are books that I found um, really cheap. So I already mentioned those. Moving on. Here we have uh, some collections. And most of these books... I had to read for university at some point. So Frankenstein, this one is nonfiction from Puritanism to postmodernism. I had to read it a um, bunch of times. More not read it, but just get information from it for American uh, literature and culture course. Over here we have Oxford Classics. So Gogol, Oscar Wilde. Uh, we forgot the name. Yeah, Mary Elizabeth Brandon and Elizabeth Caskell and Joyce. So these two I had to read in England uh, when I was there studying. These are mine. Uh, Penguin Classics, Jane Austen. Uh, so I think I said this before, I want to buy all of my Jane Austen books in this edition so it looks all nice and complete. Charlotte Bronte, Jane Eyre and E.M. Foster Passage to India. Little Tolstoy, Anna Karenina, which I haven't finished. 
might be a New Year's resolution. Who knows? Over here, we have Paul Oster for University. Don't like Paul Oster that much. Toni Morrison, A Song of Solomon. Uh, this one is not really my style, but I actually liked it. Cormac McCarthy. Now, I'm a big Cormac McCarthy fan. Really, really big. But The Road? Mm -mm. Not my favorite book of all time and not my favorite book by McCarthy. WB Yeats Collected Poems uh, was for a poetry class and we didn't have to buy the book, but I ended up buying it. Here we have some books, so William Shakespeare, Anthony and Cleopatra, and these two are, uh, these three are Shakespeare as well. Of course, I bought these before I got that beautiful present. Dracula, focus, Dracula, and then three by Virginia Woolf, well, four, because this one has two, and Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. Over here, I have Shakespeare by Penguin, so Othello, Richard III, and Macbeth. And these three are really cheap editions. They're transatlantic, transatlantic press. I, they cost like two euros <laughs> each. Uh, so Oliver Twist, Little Women, and Withering Heights. Over here. So here we have two plays, Translations and The Duchess of Malfi. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, because I adore this book. Utopia, Great Gatsby. And now on to my popular Penguin or Penguin Popular? No, Popular Penguin. Uh, Dickens, I have two. Hard Times and David Copperfield. Kim, another one by Joyce Dubliners. Treasure Island, Crime and Punishment. And Heart of Darkness, which is one of my favorite books. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. When I reviewed this book, I said that I wanted to buy all of my John Steinbeck's books in this collection, which is The Great Steinbeck. Uh, by Penguin and I actually got the pearl in the same collection, the same edition but uh, it's in my backpack because I'm currently reading it but yay I got a second one <laughs> Jack Kerouac on the road and these two are vintage editions The Handmaid's Tale and Slaughterhouse Five this one is a book it's a non-fiction book like Universal, in Universal History, just volume one because it talks about Egypt and I love the history of e Egypt. So this is my bookshelf at the moment. I have a lot of books on the back over there, especially I have a lot of books. But, you know, I'm not going to show you everything right now. Let me just get... Uh, so here on my desk, whew, these are the books that I'm currently using for university. These are library books. Uh, so these two, whew, see, <laughs> I need a Gorilla Paw. These two are for my ethics class. This one is um, John Stuart Mill, uh, Mills on Liberty. And this is about education and freedom in the classroom. Education in the, what? <laughs> um, sorry, education and freedom of choice. <laughs> uh, these two are on multiculturalism, and this is for my English English language really uh, presentation. We need to do a presentation on this for some reason. I don't know. Ask me why that class is just weird. We're not learning any English, like new English or practicing nothing. These two are for a class. Um, also, it's an English class, but it's like English methodologies. So these are like approaches and methods in language teaching, practice of English language teaching, both of them really important. These two, however, are for another class called English for Specific Purposes, where we talk about CLIL, which is content uh, and language integrated learning, which is interesting, but uh, also a pain in the ass. These two, I'm returning these two on Monday. This is geography for the ninth grade and I needed them for a project that I submitted last week uh, for this class. So these are my notebooks. I have one for each class. So I have five classes. Uh, I take this one, this very basic one to class and I take my notes there like for every class. And then when I get home, I just copy my notes like with... Uh, in ink and you know I underline and I use color and it looks all nice and pretty and clean here 
so they're all organized here but here this one I take to class every day and yeah that's that's what I've been doing um, sorry what <laughs> yeah that's what I've been doing in the sense that these are the books that I need to read and work with and they're very they're not a lot but still um, really thick okay guys so I hope you enjoyed this um, yeah, I, I wanted to make, I'm not going to talk about it now because this is a long video already, but I, I, I want to talk about like the fact that I think Instagram and even YouTube like influences people in the wrong way. Like a lot of people just buy books and have books just to show them. Uh, I might not have like, I don't know, thousands of books, but at least the ones that I have, I read basically all of them, minus like the new, new, new ones. And I'm really strict with like buying books. I don't do book hauls because I don't buy books every month. Um, and when I buy books, I read them right away. So, yeah. <laughs> so the books that I haven't read that I showed you that are the ones that are like really new and because of university, I haven't had time. So I'm not going to buy any more until I finish these. I have a lot to read. Um, yeah, that, that's stuff for another video. I hope you enjoyed this and have a nice weekend or week. I don't know when I'm going to post this. And yeah, let's hope that I can make videos like more often because this is driving me insane. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. So <laughs> bye guys.